for one of this uh, online offline event. My name is Olivier Dedu. I'm one of the founder of uh, My Macro Invest, and uh, I'm the, the, the CEO. So I'm also uh, the guy who makes uh, things turn. But uh, obviously, we have a great team that uh, we will see. If you want to have access to the internet, and it may be useful because you're going to see great investment opportunities tonight. Um, so, hotspot core station city, and the password is be more curious. Be careful with the capture letters on the B, B, M, and the C. So, yes, it's a large team. We're doing a lot of things. So, um, this is uh, the team saying hello. Um, let's start with setting the scenes on why we're here, or why we do what we do. And basically, our motto is we strive to improve our world by empowering entrepreneurs. We strongly believe that today's world um, needs to be reinvented, in, the economy needs to be revamped, and startups and entrepreneurs are the vector to do that. And it's, it's, it's absolutely critical. How we we doing that? Well, by setting up and animating an investment platform. Crowdfunding is only one part of it. We're going to talk about it uh, a little bit later. But basically, we put in contact founders and investors, so entrepreneurs and investors, so that one can help the other uh, to develop their, their project and uh, give uh, eventually a return, a financial return to the investor. And what are we doing? Well, we are an equity, but also a lending. Uh, there are also some lending projects on the platform. Uh, uh, so basically, a platform uh, raising uh, equity and lending uh, money from crowd, the crowd, so anybody from 100 euros, but also from professional investors. And that's what makes us unique in the market, is that we put together professional investors and the crowd. So I've been through the why and the how. Maybe just an overview of what is crowdfunding. You have different type of crowdfunding, and we are busy only with one type of crowdfunding. But uh, you have philanthropy with the donation type of uh, a platform. GoFundMe is, is one of them. And then you have the rewards, where basically uh, somebody wants to sell a product uh, before uh, he really produce the product um, or he wants to get support with some kind of rewards like uh, I don't know uh, uh, an autograph of a, a singer or whatever or a private concert if you put a lot of money or whatever and this is a reward crowdfunding with a Kickstarter um, which is very well known and then you have the financial crowdfunding so this is a non-financial and then you have the financial um, crowdfunding with Everything that concerns lending, so debt, and then you have the equity crowdfunding. And in lending, you have the, the C2C, uh, with, for example, Zopa, and that's the, the peer to peer lending. So it's, it's somebody uh, who's uh, willing to, I don't know, renovate his house, whatever, and he's looking for five, ten thousand, 10,000, uh, but he doesn't want to go to the bank or, or the bank uh, don't want to lend for whatever reason. But he fits the criteria of the platform, and so he asks people, uh, seed, seed consumer, uh, to lend him the money. And so you, 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 you can put your money in a portfolio of people and get a, a very decent return. And obviously there are criteria, it's, uh, the, the, there is a way to manage risk there. But that's not what we're doing. We do some C2B, so meaning you can invest in companies that are raising funds. And usually those companies are a bit more advanced than uh, uh, the typical startup because they have uh, already sufficient revenues to repay debt. Uh, but we are mostly known for equity crowdfunding. But by the way, we, we, uh, we are doing also, um, uh, we've done a lot of uh, green bonds projects. So uh, we've done uh, green bond projects uh, to finance uh, windmills. Uh, uh, and solar panels, uh, and so you can participate in the uh, sustainable uh, energy and have a return of uh, four, five, six percent, um, sometimes more, uh, in investing in those green bonds. Uh, but we are also very well known for equity crowdfunding. 
we believe that's where we can make the most impact by helping entrepreneurs at uh, a time where they really need help financially but also uh, in marketing and that's where crowdfunding is very very helpful so the beauty is that online you can invest for as low as 100 euros and be the shareholder of uh, a company or a portfolio of your choice so how does that work we are not a direct investment model we have an indirect uh, investment model which is much more appropriate by the way and how, how does it work you have here the investor and here you have the entrepreneur uh, looking for uh, for money in his company first he and we are trying to find a, a professional investor which will be important to uh, vet the, the project the valuation the structure uh, so for us it's a guarantee that's quite important for for, uh, for the investment um, obviously the founders usually has also invested his own money in the company or will uh, and the crowd comes, but we can have, uh, I think our record was uh, 500 something uh, uh, um, investors, but they don't come directly in the company. That would be uh, quite awful to, to, to the, the, the legal uh, requirements and the, um, the governance that would uh, imply such a, a direct investment structure would be basically blocking a lot of things inside the companies. It, it would be basically going to to, to uh, IPO the company technically before uh, the, the company is really able to do that. So what we do is we have an intermediary vehicle that we call My Macro Invest Finance, which has different compartments, one compartment per transaction, and which are issuing, uh, we call that equity link notes. They are really certificates, and they give you all the cash flow that comes from um, uh, the, uh, oh, sorry, from the company whenever there's going to be a return. And so for you, it's a, it's a, it's a pass-through, so all the money goes through you, um, and there is no tax implication, it's t totally neutral, and it's also defined by the law so that there is no risk associated uh, um, between the compartments. They are very well segmented, and that, is, that has been uh, secured by the law that was passed uh, last year. So, so far, what have we done? Uh, just over 85 campaigns uh, in uh, now six years. Uh, that's basically 40,000 members. And uh, we've raised on the platform 45 million, a bit more. Um, that's on the platform. What's not here is that we also have a couple of uh, venture capital funds called Inventures 1 and Inventures 2 which are targeting uh, investors uh, putting uh, on average a million euro each in the fund, uh, but from 100k, uh, which is the legal minimum uh, investment. And those funds are investing from, I would say, 150k to uh, two, three million in companies. And, and on those funds, we've raised 15 on the first, and we're in the middle of the fundraising on the second, uh, and by the end of the year, we will be around 20, 25 million. So, again, I think I've already said a lot about this, but um, co-investing with professional is one of uh, the important things, at, at least for equity crowdfunding. It, it, it's not a requirement for debt crowdfunding because you know uh, you're going to have uh, your money back uh, unless there is uh, something dramatic happening. Uh, but with equity, you need somebody to take care of the investment and make sure that the, sh the, the shares will be sold and you will get a return eventually. We can do, which is uh, a unique uh, thing with us, I don't, I don't know any other um, uh, crowdfunding platform doing it. Um, we can do campaign with prospectus, meaning that we can raise more than the uh, limitation with no prospectus, which is currently 300k in uh, Belgium. So we can do a, a much larger transaction. Um, we have basically a selection process in-house where we check a lot of things. And when it's online, 
it's been vetted by committee and uh, due diligence, uh, more or less light depending uh, on, uh, uh, quite frankly, the size of the transaction. If, uh, we cannot do the same thing uh, uh, when, when the fund invests, it's a much more in-depth because that's a professional investor. And when uh, it's on the platform, uh, we check a lot of things, but we cannot spend three months uh, with a couple of people looking at the investment like we do when the fund invests. Um, and we have our own venture capital funds, as I explained, which is uh, our own side of the professional investment. And uh, we invest only in sustainable development goals companies, so companies that solve one of the 17 SDG, as it's called. So now I will let Zeno explain uh, you a little, oh, no, sorry, uh, I'll go through the, uh, so you, who, who has heard about the tax shelter? Okay, so that's good. Not, not everyone, so I have something to, to tell you. The, the government recognized the importance of uh, the uh, startup economy and to foster investments because, I mean, let, let's be clear. Uh, Belgium has one of the highest saving rates in the world. If I'm correct, it's actually the first or the second, I can't remember. It's a long time I've been to university, so I don't know anymore. But basically, we have a very high uh, savings rate but uh, there is also another thing about the Belgian investor is that he's quite traditional in his investment. So he's, he's not the most adventurous and investing in startups uh, was not something that was uh, well known until we got here. Um, so basically to foster investment, the government passed uh, the uh, startup tax shelter law, which is actually quite interesting because you can save as a, uh, as a uh, 45% of your investment can be recouped by reducing your um, taxes. So not reducing the basis on, on which you pay your taxes. So if you invest 10,000 euro in one fiscal year in tax shelter companies, you can get four and a half uh, thousand euros back by reducing your um, taxes um, by as much. So we produced um, uh, a great digital book about um, uh, this, uh, this, this tax regime. It's on the startup tax shelter.be, and I would encourage you to get it. So I think I've been through, uh, through, through this, but basically, yes, we know why, to encourage investment in, in startups and create jobs. How? To basically diminish the risk by recouping this money, but also boosting the, the potential return. Uh, and what is it? Well, a, a tax uh, reduction. We talked about, uh, so it's on personal income and from private investors. So companies cannot benefit from it. Uh, and you can either invest directly in the companies and, and uh, get, get uh, uh, this, um, but it's also extended to crowdfunding platform, regulated. A crowdfunding platform such as My Micro Invest, and there is also the Startup Fund, but I don't know any uh, Startup Fund yet, uh, but which which have a, a, an interesting uh, tax regime. Forty-five percent for the micro enterprise, and that's what we're talking about. So balance sheet less than three hundred fifty thousand, turnover uh, less than seven hundred thousand, and annual average um, uh, employee below ten. So by my friend, that is not, definitely not. And it's also, it, maybe it's on another slide, but it's also a company less than four years old. So it doesn't apply for companies that are more than four years. Though the government has, has announced that it, it, it will uh, go through parliament with a second law for companies between uh, five and 10 years, uh, but with a less favorable um, uh, tax rebate of 25%. Um, but it's not yet a um, it, It's been uh, decided by the government and published in the press. 30% for companies less than four years, but with a bigger uh, uh, setup, balance sheet of uh, uh, up to four and a half million, turnover up to nine million, and uh, up to 50 employees. So quite rare that a company less than four years get there. Um, but um, possible. So there are another limitation is that you can only, well, I think it's uh, 
is it a limitation? It's, it's up to 100K investment per year, uh, giving a reduction of 45,000. So it is quite a lot. And it can be you and your partner. And so for, uh, for a family, it can be 200 or 90,000 of a reduction. Uh, obviously, it's not a tool for speculation. So you need to keep the shares for 48 months. And um, yes, that's it. Now, um, we're going to talk about the tracers. Um, tracers are a, a new features that uh, we're proposing for two reasons. Because we encourage investors to invest in portfolios and not only in one company, because uh, the risks are uh, such. Um, and, but also for us, it's much more easy, easier to manage when we, uh, when we have tracers, because we have criteria, we have themes, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much better model. So I will let Zeno explain you uh, what we do about tracers. Thank you, Olivier. And, uh, thank you again, Olivier. And thank you, everyone, for being here so numerously tonight. So indeed, I am going to talk about tracers. Tracers are a new way of investing on our platform, basically a new and automated way to select companies that you will invest in. So up till recently, the way you would typically invest on our platform was you would go to our platform, uh, create an account, and then manually select the company that you found interesting to invest in. Um, for a lot of people, this is an excellent way to do it, but it's also time consuming. And for many other people, we have identified the need to automate a few things. And this is where tracers come in. So. What is a tracer? Um, I will explain this to you right now. We have launched tracers uh, last summer in July and already we have had more than 1.2 million of investments through tracers. So there is a real um, need in the market that we, that we can see and so we are growing this product as we speak. You are one of the first ones to really be presented this product uh, live uh, at such an event. Um, this is a long definition of tracer. Um, which I will not read aloud to you, but let's dive into some of the, of the uh, contents of, 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 of this definition. Firstly, an automated selection tool of investment opportunities. Um, each tracer that we propose has its own set of objective uh, selection criteria, so each tracer has its own character. Uh, its own characteristics. It will select a certain type of companies that you choose to select to, to invest in, and so every tracer that you that you select, you will know what kind of companies that it will bring to you as investment opportunities. Um, these objective selection criteria uh, also lead to the fact that, uh, and that's the third point already, that there is a predefined number of investments that every tracer will select for you. Um, and um, the middle point is that the tracer identifies um, all of the eligible investment opportunities according to this criteria automatically and then proposes them to the investor that activated the tracer. Uh, and the investor so is sure that he or she has a chance to invest in every eligible investment opportunity which falls under such a tracer. So that's the automated uh, part of the tracer. What else? Um, it gives you privileged access and full control. So uh, new investment opportunities on our platform will first be presented to people that subscribe to a tracer. Uh, and only afterwards, and if there is still room to invest, will it be presented to the general public so they can, if they wish, manually select those companies uh, as an investment opportunity. But so people in the tracer uh, who committed uh, on beforehand, of course, they get uh, priority access. Now, there are two fantastic companies that will be pitching tonight. Uh, both of them has, have also been part of the Tracer program. And so for, uh, they've already raised a lot of money in, in the Tracer, but you still have, luckily, uh, the chance to invest in them tonight uh, and maybe tomorrow if things don't go too fast, which sometimes they do. Um, what else? That's, that's very important. Full control, so the investor always has a, a possibility to opt out any single investment. The tracer is an automated way to present investment opportunities to the investor, but it doesn't 
um, it doesn't hinder them from stepping out if they don't like it for any reason. So uh, it's, it's, it's about control, about access, but not uh, about being forced to make a decision. That's very important. Um, what does this all lead to? Um, so what do you get from this, from using a tracer? Um, first of all, you can choose a tracer that meets your personal investment needs. So as I explained, every tracer has its own character and selects uh, an own set of, of, of companies, a type of companies. Uh, the selection criteria also are different for every tracer, so you can choose the one that best fits your need. Um, and secondly, you have a certainty of deal flow. You will know that you are able to invest in the next five or ten, depending on the tracer, this number can vary, uh, investment opportunities that fit those criteria. Um, you are certain of that. Why? Because you have privileged access, as I explained before. How does it work? I will very quickly, you run it to recycle. It's not as complicated as it may seem. Um, first of all, let's see if this little laser works. Yes. First of all, you activate a tracer, and once activated, this tracer will start looking for eligible investment opportunities. Once such an investment opportunity is identified, it is automatically reserved for the person that activated the tracer. So he's sure that if he or she chooses, they will invest then the investor has a choice. They can look at the investment opportunity and choose to opt out, if, if they would like so. If not, the investment is automatically accepted and the investment is added to your portfolio. And the cycle repeats. X times, X being the number of investments that is predefined for every tracer, uh, the number of investments that every tracer will invest. So you may ask, what current tracers are, are available? Well, we have two that are currently uh, live on our platform that you can actually use, that people are inscribing right now. Um, on the one hand, we have the Tech Shelter Tracer, and as the name suggests, it automatically selects uh, investment opportunities that give you access to the Tech Shelter. So the, what Olivier just explained, um, by using this tracer, actually, you can uh, be sure that you will be able to uh, save a set amount of, of uh, a set amount of euros of uh, cash on your taxes uh, by the end of uh, the taxable year. Um, and so, it's very it's very handy to optimize your taxes. That's also what people are, are really uh, using it for. Um, and this selects the next ten tax shelter eligible uh, startups. Then we have the Impact VC Tracer, which selects a totally different kind of companies. Uh, this uh, tracer is actually paired with our own invest investment fund, our venture capital funds uh, in ventures, uh, which also Olivier mentioned before. And so with this tracer, actually, you, you can follow what our own venture capital fund is doing. So you can follow the investments that they are doing. Um, and what kind of investment opportunities are these? Well, these are uh, as we explained, um, sustainable investment opportunities that follow the United Nations uh, SDGs, but also that have been subjected to a very thorough uh, analysis uh, by our team for uh, indeed uh, more than months sometimes. Um, I hope this was very clear. If you have any questions about the tracers, you may ask them now, or I invite you to come and see us after the presentation. Uh, and you can ask us all the questions that you may have. Um, I don't know if there's any quick questions already. There is a, please, there yes. is a question session at the end, in, in any case. Um, we, well, we will be around here. Okay. We will uh, have a, an opportunity to drink, yeah. to uh, have a conversation. I think uh, it, it gives opportunity for a much better and deeper conversation. Uh, so you're welcome to ask us questions afterwards. Um, if you have any quick questions now about the presentation I just made, it, if anything is really unclear, maybe it's good that you have it now. But otherwise, uh, let's please have the conversation around the beer or go to call that. The very quick question would be yes. if you have looking on for, the, for tracing this, also for security reason, if you have a look, let's say, on blockchain techno technologies. Yes. Or do you have, for, for that, is that something that you see in the short term, in the long term? So we term? are currently not using blockchain technologies to do right. this. Um, uh, of course, it is interesting. I think um, many uh, companies that are digital 
uh, and that are working with selection uh, of, of, of certain opportunities are very interested in looking at blockchain as a, as a, as a technology because it's very transparent and, and also secure. Um, but we are not currently using it in this sense. Okay. No. But we are very interested and we are looking at it, of course. Right. So I will not bore you uh, for much longer. I will say though that on your way out you can find uh, information folders about the tracers uh, with all important information. So please pick up one on your way out. And then I will now give the word to Olivier who will introduce you to our story. Thank you. All right. So now we come to the front part, which, uh, which is basically to hear uh, stories of entrepreneurs. Um, so tonight, you're going to have the opportunity to hear two uh, entrepreneurs, then we're going to have a surprise a bit later with a third one. Uh, but we'll start with uh, Kiko, and I, I won't give a lot of spoiler on what Kiko does. Um, but uh, basically, on those two companies, there's, there's been an investment there will be an investment with uh, all traces to 2017. So they already got uh, a decent uh, large ticket of investment uh, secured. Obviously, uh, you just learned that the investor in the tax shelter can opt out, uh, but uh, we, we, we're sure they, they will be interested. Um, and uh, uh, so the, the amount that is to be financed uh, on top of the traces is limited. I think it's a, a minimum of 30,000 that we're looking from the crowd and a maximum of uh, 55,600. So, um, and that usually goes pretty quickly. I'm not saying it's gonna be done tonight, but I'm saying it, it usually takes, uh, uh, when it's tax shelter uh, proven, there are a lot of demands, so be aware of that. Um, and without delay, uh, we have three entrepreneurs here. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, so it's uh, Chris, Maxime, and uh, Amori, and Amori will uh, uh, introduce Kiko to you. So a warm applause to Amori. Good evening, everybody. I'm Amo from Kiko. And tonight I'll present our product because every single one of you has felt today at a certain moment, like this. <laughs> no wonder. You work hard, stressful lives, always connected. And then once in a while, you can get affected by the afternoon dip monster. When the afternoon dip monster attacks you, you feel tired, grumpy, and have a complete loss of focus. So what do most of you, what did we do when we got attacked by the afternoon dip monster? We used to drink a lot of coffee. But as we all know, coffee can have some disadvantages. <laughs> Tea, on the other hand, didn't really fit our needs. It didn't give us the energy boost we wanted. And cola or energy drinks, they're full of sugar. So they're not really a healthy alternative. So, we sat together and we asked ourselves, what else? <laughs> what else can we find? And after, after graduating, we started to develop Kiko. A hot, natural energy drink. So Kiko is a, a powder based on guarana and mate. And on top, it's 100% natural and contains 0% sugar. As I said, it's a powder, so you rip it, you mix it, you drink it, and you feel it. Which guaranina as an active molecule. And guaranina is absorbed more slowly in the blood. Which means Kiko will give you a durable energy boost. No jitters, no crash, prolonged energy. Our most important asset is our brand. Kiko stands for positive energy. I explained your functional and our emotional benefit. So it's a durable, healthy, durable energy boost. And our goal is to give people energy, but also a smile through the day. And how do we do that? 
We believe we are the best drink to beat the afternoon dead monster. The afternoon dead monster is our common enemy and our consumers. But it's also very important because during the morning people are attached to their coffee. But often what we see is during the afternoon people get tired of their coffee. That's when they start looking for alternatives. That's when a lot of you might open your Coca-Cola or your soda. We get that one coffee too much that doesn't, doesn't really taste that good anymore. We believe that's the opportunity for Kiko. Kiko is the go-to drink for your afternoon slump to beat the afternoon dead monster. And how will we do that? How will we communicate? We want to be a buddy brand. We communicate straight. We dare to make jokes. We might be blunt sometimes. But we're not as the traditional, boring, big corporate brands. And we inspire ourselves on other brands like Innocent, acquired by Coke, Michel Augustin, French cookie maker, acquired by Danone, and the original buddy brand, Ben & Jerry's, acquired by Unilever a long time ago. That's our product, that's our brand. Now we have good news. We are actually selling our product. It's not only a vague idea anymore. And how did we do it? Well, we wanted to have as much feedback as possible from you, from our consumers. So we started selling online only, a direct-to-consumer model. We developed a box that fits in your mailbox. So you don't need to be home to receive the parcel, no. It just fits in your mailbox. We're sending it to you via mail. And we learned a ton by actually knowing who are our consumers? Where do they live? How old do they look? We asked them if we could mail them, phone them. We gathered tons of data. But the most important point is the repurchase rate. Of the 10 people who bought Kiko, there are a lot more. Let's say 10 people bought Kiko, how much buy Kiko again? Well, if you look at the averages in industry, their target is 30% then you have launched a successful beverage. Well, we're happy to say that nine months after launch, our repurchase rate is 40%. So it's above the benchmark that they use as a successful beverage launch. Now, we also learned another point. Where is Kiko being drunk the most? In offices. It's not in a coffee bar, it might be at home. But the majority of people consume Kiko in their office environment. And that's why, as of next year, we will launch the new Grande Kiko Box. It's a box specially designed for in offices, for in coffee corners. We will launch that, or directly, or via distributors. People who already go to offices, for office supplies, for coffee, and so on, and they will bring Kiko with them to provide positive energy. And the good news is, we already have three distributors that will start selling Kiko as soon as we have this box produced in December. So a dual model will keep the online direct-to-consumer primarily to sell subscriptions because you gather a ton of consumer data. That's super important for the further development of your brand. Every single corporate and this, this, they want this, but they're already in supermarkets, so they don't dare to do this anymore. But then, you need to be where your consumer uses you the most, being in offices, and so the bulk of our volume in the future will be done by an offline distribution model and Kiko boxes for in offices. Now we see three phases of our growth. We just finished the, the launch where we learned that actually 40% of people who bought a box buy it again, which is quite a high number. And now we're ready for the second phase in growing our business and really looking at how big it actually can become. For that, we're now looking for a 250,000 euro investment. And we have good news. We already found a lot of fans. 100,000 will be invested by co-investors. Another 100,000 will be open via tracers. And the last 50,000 is opened to the My Micro Invest crowd as of tonight. 
And I'll finish up with ah, one very good news. We're tax shelter eligible. <laughs> so every 100 euros you invest, you get 45 euros tax credit next year. And I'll finish off with some, some news highlights and try to find a pattern evolving. Coke, Danone, Kellogg's, Nestle, Unilever. Those corporates are under pressure to deliver top-line growth and innovation. And they actually start looking at startups to deliver that growth and that innovation. They're looking into direct-to-consumer models. Unilever didn't sell razors before, but they want the direct-to-consumer models. They're looking to buddy brands, to honest, transparent brands. And the easiest way for them to do so is in the long run to look at potential startups rather than doing it internally. And that's, we believe, that with our brand, with our product, Kiko is a huge opportunity and that you should invest tonight. I'll finish up with our team. Um, we have Max and Chris here. We studied together, we grew up together. Now we have uh, plus four years of working experience in all kinds of uh, different big corporate FMCGs. And we're ready to take the next step and to build our own brand. Last but not least, if you go to drinkkiko.com and you use the discount code NMI, you get a 50% discount on your, on your Kiko box. Max and Chris have samples, so if you want to taste, don't hesitate to ask them. Don't drink tonight, you won't sleep. <laughs> Some of you. Um, but if you get attacked by the afternoon dip monster tomorrow, get your Kiko. Thanks a lot. So, um, well, we tried uh, in the team, uh, we, we tried and we loved it. And really, it's a. Uh, Think about it, uh, a better alternative to coffee with a long-lasting effect and uh, no sugar. So uh, there's no, no comparison. What else? What else? <laughs> if you have questions, there is a mic here, so uh, feel free. our product is a, is a unique blend. Now you can try to reverse engineer the blend, just like you can try to make your own Coca-Cola and stuff. We believe that in the long run, our sustainable competitive advantage is our brand. You want to feel good because you use our product, because it's our brand. I can go and create a new Coca-Cola tomorrow, but you won't drink mine, you will drink Coke's. So we believe by investing in our brand, we will make a difference and people will use us, will love us for our brand. And that's in the long term the competitive advantage. So yes, you could make your own product, but you won't have the, the brand. Well, actually, it's not making a product, it's not just taking one and after so. Yeah, I think uh, it's just a taste. If you only take the mate or only the guarana, your, the taste will be different. So we've added uh, a natural pomegranate flavoring to enhance the taste, so it's basically the taste aspect. So the recipe is important. Yeah. I don't need to. Hi, good evening. Uh, will, be, will you be disrupting the coffee industry, basically, or what is your plan? So um, what we see is that we both uh, source volume from coffee drinkers, but also from tea drinkers and from cola drinkers. So it's actually uh, those three that we will be attacking. Of course, uh, we won't uh, be changing the coffee landscape tomorrow. But uh, if we can convert some coffee drinkers into a Kiko drinker, that's a good thing for us. Um, but basically, coffee, tea, and cola, and uh, Red Bulls, and tea drinks, and so on. I think also if you look at where it started from, from us, um, we see from a survey from our consumers so far, we source a lot from coffee, but they don't stop drinking coffee all of a sudden. I think it's more, uh, you have a lot of consumers who used to drink four cups, six cups, and who substitute the last two now for Kiko. 
And I think if you see the, the enormous market that, that is a coffee at the moment, that this, this size of the pie is, is, is quite big for us. Uh, hello. Um, I'm interested in the numbers. Um, I think per cup your drink is about 60 centimes per cup. And what is the cost of an equivalent coffee made at home or in the office? It depends a lot on your, uh, your coffee quality. Now, if you buy it online directly, it's 67 cents per cup, which is quite a premium proposition. You have to start like that as a brand. For an office proposition, like the Grande box, the cost per consumption is 40 cents. The 40 cents is in line with the premium beverage being offered to employees. Take your sodas, are quite are a bit more expensive. And we have instant hot choco, instant premium teas, are often around the 40 cent price point. The really basic coffee, basic yellow Lipton safe, is a lot cheaper. If you take an espresso capsule in office environment, it's around 60 cents, for example. Okay, it's nice that you've done a bit of calculation there. Um, I think, uh, perhaps not for this forum, but a uh, bigger chat on the numbers is important. Uh, how long you've been going, what your turnover is at the moment, what you're selling, uh, who you're selling to. Um, but I think that's a bigger subject than tonight. When you agree. Look out for their faces, they'll be around a bit longer than I will, but. Uh, They'll be fully equipped to answer your questions. Thanks a lot. So you can you can always ask questions after uh, the event when we're gonna have a drink. But also uh, we are platform, so everything is in line online. You can check our website and go, and you'll find the, the information. We'll take the last questions uh, for Kiko, and uh, so but feel free to come and talk to them after the, the event. Yeah, no, please. Um, did you say that you're gonna move into more channels, sales process, or? How do you evaluate your own, let's say, platform in the, you know, B2C or B2B sales? Uh, you said something, but I'm not sure I remember correctly. So, if I understand correctly, your question is about our channel strategy that we will involve in more channels. Yes. So now we're only selling online, only direct to consumer, because you get the beta, you get the direct connection with consumers. Our next step is to actually evolve in a, a B2B channel, an offline channel with a large box, and that's we start with the first three distributors. For the next two years, at least, we'll leave it to those two channels. So offline B2B box, online direct to consumers. Retail will only be examined at a later stage because you first need to build your brand because before you be your own shelves. Otherwise, they kick you out after six months, you paid entrance fees, and it's up to the next one, and you lost a lot of money. To be clear, the B2B box, it's, it's distributors selling to, to, uh, to companies. Because we use that uh, abbreviation, but it's tend to be used in a lot of ways. So it's companies, distribu distributors, uh, sending the boxes to companies. Can you tell us a little bit more about the three distributors? Like names and what's their market segment or what are they into? Mm -hmm. um, so it actually, it's it are the first three we contacted. So our hit rate is 100% at the moment, which was positive. Um, two of them are coffee distributors. So their main business is coffee, they have coffee machines, but you know, they go there though, so they want to bring as much as possible with them. So they have tea, they have snacks, and so on. Um, and they're very excited to actually, it's a premium proposition, so they make more absolute margin by selling Kiko than with an average yellow lip on tea. So they're actually um, enthusiastic. Coffee distributors are enthusiastic to increase their volume with them because you, know, you win market share of soft drinks as well. And the third one is, it's a, a younger company, and it's Living Stories. And they deliver, they're exploding at the moment, because they deliver a box full of healthy snacks in offices. So again, in terms of end consumer, it's exactly the same as we, same one as we have in mind. So they actually go to companies that by definition could or should be interested in Kiko. They're, up, they're also gonna um, take Kiko with them and propose it to the companies they're currently selling to and they're our next company. So at the moment, we have two coffee distributors and one snacking um, distributor. And we'll, we're, we're looking to expanding different kind of distributors, so one office supply, for example, and then we'll see which one is the most effective, and then that's the way we go and we invest them. That's a great question. Thank you very much. I think um, <coughs> we're gonna, uh, well, first, a, a warm applause to our three entrepreneurs.
we're going to move to the second uh, uh, startup of uh, the evening. Uh, and Nari will talk about uh, sizable, and sizable is all about quality, sustainability, and uh, comfort. So please go ahead. Thank you. Addictive comfort. Uh, I'd like to start first showing you a video that we should, and uh, so if that could, do I just have to push start on the play? Since the beginning of time, you've been here, taunting us, humbling us, formidable monoliths of ebb and flow, dark pools of salty moisture under the moon, shadowy, murky waters under an unforgiving sun. Since the beginning of time, you've been here, taunting us, humbling us, formidable monoliths of ebb and flow, dark pools of salty moisture under the moon, shadowy, murky waters under an unforgiving sun. It's supposed to be on YouTube, so. But anyway, uh, I don't know. Is it on the USB stick or is it on the PC? It's, it's supposed to be on the PC. I'll give it all to you. If it's just on the USB stick, put it on the. In spite of being a startup, right? So you always hope that nothing is going to happen and still. It does. Waters under an unforgiving sun. <laughs> okay, it's okay. I'll, I'll just start the presentation because otherwise I'm going to be more stressed out by it than anything else. Right. So, anyway, so I will read. Under an unforgiving sun. Yeah. <clears throat> so, as you can see, uh, we are basically making. I'm just going to start the presentation. Don't worry about that. So, if I can just have my PowerPoint. Sorry about that, guys. So, uh, basically, so I'm Marie, and I've just uh, recently bought shares in Sizable, and I've been appointed CEO, like, uh, recently, like, months ago. And I uh, really fell in love with it, just by the fabric of it, and I just think that, for men, there's not so many options in terms of comfort, as we women have, and also uh, in terms of uh, nature friendliness, in terms of natural, using natural fibers in body wear, underwear, and also in fit. Uh, so, unlike women, we have quite a lot of products in terms of fit, but unfortunately the choices for men is quite poor. So, uh, these are basically our products. Um, so, basically, you have the undershirts, so they are going around. Uh, they are made out of eucalyptus fiber, so it's uh, natural fiber, and basically eucalyptus is extremely absorbent, more absorbent than cotton. And the fact as well that we're using uh, the natural fibers is actually, in terms of for the environment, they, they use less pesticide, fertilizers, less water. So it is uh, basically more nature friendly. So then we have the socks that's also going around. They're made out of uh, bamboo fiber. And again, uh, the bamboo uh, is basically very soft as well, uh, very absorbent and also antibacterial, so very skin friendly. All of them. And our boxer briefs, they are basically made out of uh, organic cotton. So again, 
the, we, for each of those products, the reason uh, we have used a different fibers is because uh, for those products, the, those components are quite, uh, I mean, they're the best fits for that condition, actually, let's say, for that part of the body. So, uh, so these are the, the three types. And so the, the idea, because we actually one third of people buying our, our products are women, and they obviously are buying for their husbands or, fr or boyfriends and, and so on. But uh, the thing is that we also are getting a request actually from women to make undershirts for them. And we have therefore already with the socks, we have provided a 36, 38 size uh, in order already to uh, meet that need. And the ladies are also quite a big fan of boxes, especially the elegant one that uh, is shown there. And uh, so we are looking into in future development to develop uh, sizable women, also sizable junior, uh, just because of the natural fiber. All our products are basically produced in Portugal, and uh, so we also uh, being having a mission of being nature friendly is uh, basically uh, lowering down our carbon uh, carbon footprints uh, around the world and want to create jobs actually here uh, in Europe. So the fit, so that's what we talked about uh, earlier mentioned, so uh, one of our mission there is basically uh, we women, we actually have quite a lot of fitting, and we, I mean, if you just look at the bras, like it goes from AA, and for the lucky ones, to double E, but uh, in this case, I mean, for men, it's quite, you know, it's, they just have S, M, and L, XXL, and so forth, but nothing has been done in terms of shape of the body size. So we have defined basically three types of bodies, so we call them at the moment Jim, Joe, and Jack. So the gyms are basically this type of rectangular guys, I mean, not that you have to <laughs> actually imagine a rectangle, but basically it's those very long type small guys. Then we have the, the Joes, and basically more the rounder types, and then we have the Jacks, and basically the rugby type, if you want. And the, so in those cuts uh, that we have defined, it, we also have the sizes going from S uh, until uh, XXL. And so the reason being is just like just to give that extra comfort uh, for for men actually. So um, the market, so that we're operating in so in Europe, the bodywear market is quite uh, large. Uh, it's uh, 41 billion dollars uh, euro, sorry. And uh, so in Belgium, the underwear market is at around 130 million. So what we're trying to do is basically uh, at the moment we're very active uh, in, in Belgium and uh, obviously we want to go uh, furthermore and online uh, as well. So in the shops, what we're trying to do uh, because of languages, uh, we're targeting the Benelux, France and the UK and uh, on, for the online business we're adding on the Nordics as well. And uh, obviously markets like Germany and Italy, because of language reasons at the moment we are also focused. Uh, we just want to target actually uh, those markets at the moment. So what we have is basically, well, these are the, our two uh, distribution channels, so online and it's already live, uh, so we, we're doing quite well. And what we see actually is that uh, once you've tried it, or even if you touch it, uh, basically people start with one, but then they come back and buy 10 or uh, even uh, you know, 15 briefs at a time, so which is quite uh, interesting how men buy, actually. Oops. So our investment needs, I was told that I have to do a three minute pitch, so my whole pitch was around three minutes, so um, <laughs> which is going so speedy. And uh, so we basically are seeking 200,000 200, euros now, and uh, so we have right now available in tax shelter 147K. Uh, so at this moment, uh, closing by the end of this month actually and uh, we're doing actually I mean quite well in, in the raising fund so I don't think we have that much available on tax shelter but uh, we're still open uh, for more and if you have any more questions please ask so this is us so Frank and Levic they're just in the back there supporting me tonight and Frank is uh, responsible for all the operations and Levic is basically our business analyst and numbers guy and also driving the e-commerce strategy we're not doing this alone, so we have advisors and consultants that are helping us. The most important for us is actually Francois Bruno, and Francois is also an investor, and he used to be the chief marketing officer of Apple Retail. He's the guy behind the launch of the iPod in Europe, 
and so he's helping us in uh, defining better uh, our branding positioning at the moment. So we have in fashion, we have two people that are helping us. Uh, we have Rina, and she is a consultant at ASUS. I don't know if you're familiar with ASUS, but that's kind of the Zalando of the UK. Uh, we have Cecile Robb, so she's uh, now sales senior uh, whole sales manager at Polka, which is a high-end fashion brand in France but she also has 15 years of Burberry, and so she will be helping us in getting into the Grand Magasin uh, in, uh, in France, actually. Stéphane Van Bellingen, if you watch RTL TVI, you would see that he's a weatherman of uh, RTL TVI, and so he's basically helping us in uh, promoting the brand. Then we have uh, Jacques Belkens, and he's the head of CSR at Engie, and he's basically helping us in uh, our sustainable uh, strategy as well. So that's it for me. So, any questions? First, I think we should uh, give a warm applause to. Uh, <laughs> interesting to wear uh, eucalyptus and bamboo. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we can take some questions. So how do you feel? I mean, how do you feel about it if you touch it? But I suppose most of you have already touched it. So, what's the first word that comes to mind? Uniqlo. Sorry? Uniqlo. Uniqlo, that's good. We, we have the same uh, pricing level, so that's good. Okay. But it's a, a, a very important competitor for you, Uniqlo. Mm -hmm. Not at the moment, because like, uh, you know, these are like really established brands, and so we're not at the level yet, but we're actually working mm -hmm. towards it. So our main competitors are mainly people like the C Français, uh, so, uh, Home Basics or Banigo. Uh, so these are the types of, uh, I mean, competitors because they're quite niche. We are niche uh, in the sense that we are uh, socially responsible at one end because for us conditions, uh, I mean, I don't know if you heard the news of uh, Inditex Group with uh, workers in Turkey that are putting messages in garments saying that they haven't been paid for three months. We don't want to have those situations. So we are basically working with uh, manufacturers here in, uh, in Europe and Portugal. So, uh, so in that sense, we're quite niche uh, compared to uh, you know, a brand like Uniqlo. Okay. So how do you see the network effects, let's say, for your platform sales? That the, the network effects that you may have through, uh, let's say, yeah, yeah, I, through, through networks or through... Uh, yes, well, at the moment, well, obviously, to the network of shops, high-end, I mean, high-end uh, male shops. So that's what we're trying to get in. And we're having a nice uptake in Flanders, actually. Uh, so we, we're working towards the side of, uh, of the country. But uh, in terms of, we actually are in discussions. Uh, we have one deal already, but I can't say the name, but with uh, one quite famous, uh, well, his brother is very famous, but he's on the way up. A football player and we actually have a very top football player that might be investing as well uh, in the company and being our investor so I think with those type of, of profiles uh, we will get a brand recognition and brand awareness and so we obviously like uh, working with uh, you know various uh, all those type of things so we need brand ambassadors for sure to, to get the update and so we are aiming because next year is 2018 and so we basically are aiming to get all of our red devils inside the wolf sports shorts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's going pretty well. So. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, just a very simple one. Mm -hmm. Cross. Of, uh, of so our, our socks, basically, uh, that are running around, we have little box like that with two pairs of socks. It's 11 euros 95. And we have the undershirts, so we have three shades, like white. And then a box of the both in 19, And if you come to me and give me your email address, I'll give you 10% discount. <laughs> <laughs> That's how nice you are. Any other questions? I'm sorry about the video, because it's been a good fun. Well, you know so. what? I never declare uh, <laughs> uh, that it, we're going to have the video. We'll try again. Well, I <laughs> spare you the, 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 the beginning. Sudden is swelling, leaving scars on our souls. Endless, you roll and roll. A 
force of nature no man can control. Unless that man wears sizable, of course. Sizable underwear is made of natural fibers whose uncooled absorbing qualities give you that cool, dry feeling. Sizable perfectly matches your size, your body type, and your way of living. We have everything it takes to give you peace of mind, like a perfectly calm, smooth sea. Okay, very good. A uh, warm applause to Marie and what she does. So, uh, on Sizable, I think there is only basically 10,000 left uh, for, for the class, so this will uh, work for the future as we do. And we put uh, the, those two uh, startups online a couple of hours ago, so. Uh, don't be afraid if you see only uh, a few hundreds. Uh, it's just because it was launched for the event. All right, so now we have um, another entrepreneur coming. Um, and, and again, if you have more questions on Sizable, feel free to talk to Mar Marie uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but I will first introduce um, a third entrepreneur. Uh, but he's not available for investment, but it's basically one of our, our very first success story. Uh, so, Pierre Rousseau uh, has been uh, at the same school as, uh, as I am, so obviously a very good one. Um, but then he, he went to live and work as an entrepreneur in this city. And so, you may speak Chinese with him if you want. I won't. Uh, but a couple of years ago he came back and uh, thought that something was missing in this country, at least uh, done properly. And he launched his first uh, uh, center as a uh, yoga teaching uh, company and place. And now he's, he's op opening a second one and then it will be a third, a fourth, and hopefully uh, hundreds of them. Uh, but What's interesting is that in a couple of years, he's been able to first bring the culture of yoga um, to a, l a large community, create, what, 30, 30 jobs? Good. 30 jobs in a couple of years, so I think that deserves a lot of respect. Uh, and for the crowd investors, it's been, uh, it's been a, a super story because they've invested two years ago, 18 months ago, to be precise. And um, so a few months ago, uh, Pierre came and said, well, I would like to have another investor coming and helping me to grow faster because now that my proof of concept is done, uh, but I, I would like to try if uh, uh, the crowd wants to sell um, that the new investor, which is a more professional investor, uh, will buy out the crowd. And so uh, we negotiate uh, a price that seemed uh, interesting for all parties. We proposed that to the crowd, and uh, the crowd voted massively yes uh, to have a quick uh, return and allow this company to develop faster. And that was basically uh, twice, uh, so it's a 100% uh, uh, of uh, a return in 18 months. Uh, but without delay, let's hear what Pierre has to say about uh, Yoga Home. One of those to Pierre. So one thing first, if you speak Chinese, don't speak Chinese with me. <laughs> okay, I spent uh, 10 years in China and I don't speak that well Chinese anymore. Uh, so the story is this one, um, how to say, I am um, from Brussels. Uh, I studied in Brussels, I was at Solvay uh, for five years. Um, after Solvay, when all my friends were recruited by Mac, Bain, BNP, uh, Price and so on, uh, I decided to go to China. Uh, I wanted. Uh, I spent one year in America first. I spent nine months in India, and uh, yeah, after after the studies, I wanted to go to China. So I went to China. I found a job, what was which was very well paid. I was making 200 euros per month. It was amazing. Uh, I loved it, uh, and I really learned it the hard way. So uh, I spent. Uh, I was supposed to go there for six months. I stayed uh, nine and a half years. Uh, what happened to me over there? I. Um, 
I did the Stalingrad internship. After that, I helped to build the Belgian and European pavilion for the World Expo in Shanghai. I stayed in that company for one year, exactly, and then I started my first company in China. I started over the nine years three companies in China. Uh, one, one went very well. One was a disaster. <laughs> and one uh, went bankrupt three months after I sold it. So it's OK. Uh, however, <laughs> So what happened is that on one side you make a lot of money, on the other side you lose a lot of money, but at the end what I remember is that I learned a lot, and I learned it the other way in China. Uh, however, what I discovered in China, and that's really what today I, uh, I have with me, uh, I discovered yoga. So after one year, China is an amazing city, but it consumes you, okay, it's a lot of energy, uh, a lot of people, a lot of Chinese, uh, and, uh, and so yes, it, and it's not your home country, it's, it's not your culture, so it's, it's really uh, it's difficult. Uh, I discovered yoga uh, with, my, with, my, with my wife, uh, and uh, yeah, she pushed me for three months, to, yeah, try to come to yoga, and I was always, like I see many guys here, and I was always, you know, yoga is not for guys, so <laughs> let me go. Okay, one day I said, okay, I come with you tonight, and she, she took me to hot yoga with Bill, the guy was 65 years old, I was 25, the class was 90 minutes, and it was 42 degrees in the room for 90 minutes. I died, but I loved it. I, I, from that day, I did yoga every day for four years until I burned out completely uh, because I did too much yoga. Uh, but I loved it. I really loved it. Um, from a student, from a, like a yoga member, I became a teacher with my wife. My wife became the hot yoga teacher in China. When I say hot yoga teacher, it means she was the teacher teaching hot yoga. Okay, so I don't mix everything. And uh, so she was the hot yoga teacher in China. Um, I became a teacher as well. People were telling us, yeah, your class are not that bad, so you should, you should try to push it a bit more. Uh, we took over a small studio, which had 20 people, 20 members. Within six months, we pushed it to 800 members. And then we took, it, we took another studio in Shanghai, and then we arrived at eight. Uh, it was already eight years we were in China. And we said, okay, enough, now we go, uh, we go back. Uh, to Europe, uh, but the question was, what can, what is the best thing we can bring from our uh, nine years in China? And the answer was super straight, super easy. It was yoga. Okay, so that's how I built this project, which is Yoga Room. Um, the idea was, um, in fact, what I want to share, what is the most important, is that, and that's what I say to everyone, is that uh, don't launch a business for the money. Okay. <laughs> Don't launch, don't launch a business uh, because the opportunities are amazing, because uh, everybody is buying this kind of business every day. Launch a business because your heart is speaking, okay? Launch this business because when you speak to people in their eyes, okay, they believe in you, they believe in your dream, in your project, okay? Me, I was living in China for nine years. I was not existing in Belgium. I had no bank account. I have never, never been working in Europe. Uh, and I arrived to one bank, uh, Belfus, okay? And I was dressed like this, okay, with my, my uh, in a t-shirt and everything, and I just told her, listen to me now, okay? Yoga changed my life, okay? I went to China to make a lot of money. I'm coming back to Europe to launch yoga studios, okay? She was like crazy. I said, just listen to me, okay? And so she believed in me. What is important when you sell a, a project, okay? When you pitch a project, there, there are three things, okay? You need to speak with your heart, okay? You need to think with your brain, and you need to convince people with your eyes, okay? If you have these three things, okay, everything becomes much easier, okay? But you need to have it in your heart first. So this is how um, we start the project. How we make the project alive, so the idea, what I realized in Brussels is that we live in an amazing world today, okay? Society is great, everything goes fast, we have iPhone X, we have iPhone 20, I don't know, okay? It's fantastic, okay? But we are burning ourselves, we are, we are burning ourselves, okay? Computers are not faster than our brain, so we are always behind, it's tiring and everything. Uh, people are burned out, okay? You can if you open a newspaper every day, they are burned out everywhere, okay? And the press, the media, they said, um, about, they decide, I don't know really why or what they did, but the solution for all these issues seems to be yoga, okay? It, was, it seems to be two years ago. Everybody was talking about yoga. And then when you were coming on, your, on, on, uh, on Google, okay? Uh, you were looking for uh, yoga studios, and uh, there was nothing. Or at least, no, there was a lot. There was a lot, because around the first yoga center we opened, there was 103 yoga studios within three kilometers. Okay? So people told me I was crazy. 
And, uh, but when you were looking at the website, you were, oh my God, oh, I'm not going to start that. I'm not going to do yoga <laughs> in a small apartment over there. And uh, so that was not possible, okay? So I said, okay, I'm going to create a concept. And it, uh, in fact, I didn't create, I didn't invent. I just made what, made what, according to me, was right, what I wanted to offer in terms of yoga. I said, I'm going to create a concept in which people, they do not have excuse anymore to not start yoga. What was it? Best teacher ever in Europe, best facilities, uh, yoga class from 7 to 10 p.m. every day, okay, and a booking system which is super easy with no cash, with just an app and everything. We launched this, so that was the project. And the idea was to say, I want to build a project, of, I want to offer to Brussels a yoga studio which is worth of the capital of Europe, because we have nothing. And usually people living in Brussels, they forget we are the capital of Europe, and they should be proud that we are the capital of Europe. So that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so I did this project. I went to the bank, blah, blah, blah. I pitched them, they told me, okay, here's 150,000 euros. Uh, we can put a little bit of warranty. I said, okay, I'm going to do this. And then I knew nothing about Belgium, and so my brother, he told me, ah, you know, maybe to invest. And I was like, no, no, yeah, no, I don't know. I, I don't know who are those guys and everything. I came to, uh, to my micro invest. Uh, they pitched me very well the, the, uh, the product. I said, okay, let's try. It was an amazing experience for me uh, because in fact, what I achieved, what is really interesting with, uh, with what I did with my friend is that you do in one month what you could hopefully do in six months, okay? Because you have the live, at, at that time we had the live in the, big, uh, in the big room, there was 500 people and everything, so there was pressure. Okay, so within six months, uh, you do in one month what we were supposed to do in six months. We get the funding, we get 100,000 euros. On top of this, there was a guy, like uh, an investor, like institutional investor, he was just passionate about yoga like me. Super easy, I met him on a Saturday morning, you know, he was coming out of his bed. We talked about yoga, we didn't talk about the business plan. At the end, like right when I was taking my car, he told me, uh, by the way, how much you need? Uh, just 120, okay, that's fine, I'm going to take it. Okay, I was okay, that's okay. <laughs> Things are going well. <laughs> the bank said yes, the investor said yes, the crowdfunding is going well. Okay, and so uh, so that's how it the finance the crowd. It was a really good experience. Like, I, I, I need to say, I, 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 yeah, I love it. It was a very nice way to test the concept and everything. We get the money, we get the construction, the construction going. Uh, and, uh, and yes, we opened on uh, the 1st of February 2016. That's where, uh, that's when I'm going, I'm not going to say all the problems start, but the adventure really started because from that day it went crazy. What happened on the, the 1st of February, um, in fact we did a pre-sale campaign, so we were selling membership before the opening. Uh, I was expecting um, to have, I don't know, maybe 5,000 euros or something like this. I was but that's enough. Anyway, nobody believed me that the guy's going to work. We end up with 40,000 euros. I was okay, that's good money. <laughs> so I was happy. Um, at first, I wanted to get 100,000 euros with MMI. I got 220, so that was not that bad as well. Uh, so before the opening, we had too much money. We had too many, too many members. We had 200 members before the opening. Um, and um, and uh, since uh, February 1st, this is what happened. Uh, what happened with what we did with Yoga Room is, uh, I'm not going to say it's interesting, but I think for the yoga uh, community in Brussels or even in Europe, it's quite nice and it shows there is an interest. It shows that if you approach it the right way, it can work. Um, within the, the, the next 12 months of our opening, we did uh, 100,000 people okay, in the offer studio, 100,000 people. It's a lot. Okay. <laughs> Uh, after two months, I decide to go from 500 square meter to 800 square meter. After five months, I decide to open studio number two. I went to the bank, I show her three months of uh, number. She told me, okay, that's enough. I'm going to finance number two. Uh, we are now opening number three um, and number four. And we have uh, a community of around 8,000 people, active, 8,000 active people who come to Yoga uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we have uh, 20 teachers coming from all over the world. We have uh, yeah, a bit more than 30 people working with us. Uh, we welcome 400 people per day in average per studio, which is a lot. Uh, and I was not expecting all this, so it pushed us to organize, to reorganize us very well. In fact, we opened on February 1st, and on the 15th of February, it was already too much, so we had to recruit more people. We are not ready for that. 
But anyway, this is positive kind of issues, I would say, and I hope that everybody can have this kind of problem because uh, it's, uh, it's better to fight when everything goes well and that the money is flowing in than uh, the opposite. Okay. Um, what I'm proud of uh, today, after this, uh, it's already 18 months now, is that um, my idea was to show Brussels that my, it was, my idea was to bring yoga to Brussels. My idea, my dream was really to make yoga av available, accessible to everyone. Okay? And it's accessible to everyone. We can all come to yoga. It's available from 18 to we have people who are 92 years old who come to yoga. Okay, really, it's true. And they mix together with people who are 25, so it's amazing. Okay, we build a community of 8,000 people, active people, so they come on a regular basis. Um, we are profitable from day one, from the first month we are profitable, which is nice as well. Um, what I'm proud as well is that we build an amazing team. It's, like, it's interesting, fine. it's important, okay? Uh, build a team, and build a team, it's important. To, uh, uh, that's a small, uh, I don't know if I'm in the right position to give advice, but I think when you build a team, what is important is that you need to constantly communicate about your vision, okay? You need to make sure people, people are on the same page, okay? When they are going to be challenged by a customer, it's important that they live the same vision, that they live the same passion, and they can speak to the customer like you would speak to the customer. Okay? So it's super important. So you don't like, don't be afraid to. It's not wasting time. It's really spending time with your team, telling them, okay, we want, we believe that a better world is possible thanks to people feeling better. We believe in that. Okay, so tell them. So you need to really spend time with that. Um, what are the challenge we face? Um, um, challenge is that, of course, like yoga, it has it exists since 4,500 years ago. Okay, so we didn't invent yoga at all. Um, but yeah, in Brussels, there were many people um, teaching yoga for the last 30 years, and uh, and they were sharing their passion, but they had no. I'm going to say they had they were they were not really organized. On on the business perspective, you know. So they were teaching yoga for eight euros per class, and uh, they were offering one yoga class per day, and they had five people in their class. That means they make 40 euros per day, times 30 days, it means 1,200 euros per month. They remove 50 euros, 50% 50 of the tax, and they end up with 600 euros per month. And so those guys, they were struggling, you know. And then they see yoga room coming, and we do on the first month 5,000 people, and we are profitable, and blah, blah, blah. And so it creates a, lot of, a, little, a little bit of frustration, which is not fun, for me. Uh, and it's not fun for us. And so it's people who start to, to say, and that, that make me really feel sad because it's not true. Um, they say, but yes, uh, they are selling the, the yoga to business, and the soul of yoga is not there anymore. And so that's, that's something which is difficult to manage. Um, what are the challenges as well is that uh, when it's growing, but yeah, you need to keep being organized. Um, and. Uh, and also, if there are people you believe they are going to follow you, and on one day they come in the morning and tell you, okay, you know, like, uh, in the room, that's nice, but okay, I'm gone. <laughs> it's okay, well, let you know how much you were managing. Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. But what you need to learn is that nobody, uh, everybody can be replaced, okay? So even the best person, even the best teacher, they can be replaced anytime. We had one teacher, we started the company with him, well, not the company, but he was part of the team, he was one of the best teachers we ever had. Um, the first month of, out of the 4,000 people we had, he, wa he had 3,000 people in his class. Okay? So 75% of the members were going to his class. After he was supposed to stay to, uh, 12 months, he stayed two months. After two months, he, comes, he came to me and told me, you know, Belgium is not for me, I want to go to Thailand, the sun is over there, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, go to, go to Thailand if you like. Uh, and, uh, and what happened is that he disappeared. And uh, in fact, uh, all customers, they stayed. Uh, we had even more people every month, and, and it happened every time. So really, don't be afraid. Nobody is replaced. Uh, uh, everybody can be replaced, and everybody can, can be replaced easily. Okay. So that was one of the challenges. The team. We are a, a, a people business. So with people business come people issues. Okay, so uh, we were not ready for that, but we had to learn. Um, what? Um, uh, any? Yes. That's the last slide of. It's a few few advice or recommendation I can say about my experience, okay. Uh, I think today is the era of uh, startups, everybody wants to invest, everybody wants to be entrepreneur, okay. Like, uh, not everybody is, and 
what does it mean to be entrepreneur? I'm not entrepreneur, I'm yoga teacher, okay? Uh, they are a coffee maker, uh, but we are not entrepreneur, okay? When we ask you what is your job, you don't answer, I'm employee, you know, it doesn't make any, it doesn't mean, like, it doesn't mean anything. So, what is important is that you need to listen to your heart, okay? This is, for me, this is really why the uh, yoga room is here today, is that I was, I was really able to speak to people in my heart. Also, when you, when your heart is at the center, what is important and interesting is that when it becomes difficult, at least you still have the meaning, okay? So you don't forget why you are doing this. I strongly believe a better world is possible thanks to people feeling better. From that, my mission is to make yoga available to as many people as possible, okay? Whatever it will take, I will do it. I will, whatever it will take, I will do it, okay? Sometimes you are tired and everything, but we do it. So if money is the center of what you do, it's going to be difficult, like it, is, yeah, it might be the end. Okay, so listen to your heart. Make sure that what you want to do is aligned with what you have deeply in yourself. Um, what else? Uh, yes, um, make sure that your team is the right one. Uh, make sure that you can sell your project well. <laughs> That's important. And uh, and then the best advice I can tell you, if you want to succeed in life and in your business, is to do yoga. <laughs> so, so that was my story in, in a short, uh, as uh, Olivier said, is that what we did with uh, MMI it was nice. We got 100,000 euro with a crowd and an, another 120,000 with another investor. After 18 months we doubled, uh, so all the investors got 200,000. From the 100,000 we gave them back 200,000, which is quite nice, so doing nothing. They did, if they did not have to do yoga also, so <laughs> that was nice, it was not a condition. Uh, and yes, like uh, if you have good ideas, uh, ideas that speak to your heart and ideas that speak to people, but uh, try to launch them, uh, sky is the limit, and as long as you don't try, you don't know, so just try them. So yeah, have a good evening, thank you, and uh, thank you Olivier for uh, helping me at the time. advice to an entrepreneur, um, but uh, I will also, uh, one, of, one of you asked me questions before the event uh, on how to invest, how to select uh, uh, startups, and uh, I'm, I'm also, uh, in my responsibility, I'm running uh, the, uh, the two VC funds, so and all my experience is uh, as a professional investor, and my advice is, uh, first, the people, so the team, uh, who's running the show and who's, who's behind, Second, it's the people, and third, it's the people. And when, when you're satisfied with, uh, with uh, that you have uh, the, the right people in front of you, uh, then you look at the market, and how's the market is, uh, uh, evolving? Is, is it a growing market? Is it uh, a, a market with uh, more and more competition? What, 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 what's the margin in the market? Are they thinnering th or are they uh, growing? And, um, uh, and when you're satisfied with that, you start thinking about is it the right product uh, to address the market? Uh, but it's only when you're satisfied with the two because you can always adapt the product, but you cannot change the market, uh, and you can, and it's very difficult to change teams. So, uh, so these are the the, the advice. And, and, and the first advice is don't invest in one startup. Invest in five, ten, twenty, uh, but create uh, a portfolio for yourself. You don't need. You don't need to do it in the first day, but you need to do it because uh, it's too risky to invest in, in, in one uh, company, and that, that's also why we create the traces. But um, what I said about uh, the, uh, the advice on, on when you invest apply perfectly uh, to Pierre. So uh, you can tell uh, that uh, he doesn't want to be to be an uh, to be claimed to be an entrepreneur, but he's a real one uh, with passion, with a heart. So uh, that that first condition is certainly met. Uh, market, uh, well, yoga is uh, uh, a growing market, uh, and and there was a there was not a lot of competition. Uh, I think you you are the first of your kind uh, in, in Brussels, so so the second condition is met, um, and and so there is no no miracles because those conditions are met. It was a great investment, and what I admire is how Pierre has been um, taking advantage of the crowdfunding and the, and the crowd. Uh, to build up his marketing and his presence in the market. So, uh, crowdfunding campaign is also a way to uh, to have hundreds of ambassadors uh, in your community of investors. And you had 100 investors, and they've all, re uh, all 
all of them has been uh, an ambassador and uh, have brought uh, part of the success uh, also uh, with their ambassadorship. And so I think Pierre was smart enough to use that properly and to give a reward to the investor, which was nice. Okay, so um, if you have a few questions, uh, we can take a few questions and then we'll have drinks. Yeah, I've just got an idea rather than a question. I think in uh, Pierre's yoga room, we could sell Kiko's drinks and Sizable's underwear. Thank you very much for your presentation. Those who think about organic growth for sustainable reasons or political reasons or even visions, and not, and not go to a venture capitalist platform or, or a car platform. How would you reflect on that, please? The difference between organic growth and go to a um, yeah, car or venture capitalist platform, please. Um, can you clarify a little bit? There's a lot of companies, let's say, in software, sometimes, that have a community vision. So they say, we don't want to have foreign investor, investors, we just want to have a organic growth which is of course longer term. But that means that it's, they become stronger, the team is stronger, but they may have of course more financial difficulties. That, yeah, okay. that from the vision, that's what it may be organic growth. So, so they don't have any foreign investors, um, not even maybe crowd. So there, what would be the argument for, let's say, from a sustainable point of view, to leave the organic grow, growth vision yeah. to move on to a crowdfunding. Okay, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Um, me, uh, in fact, something I always say to the people I work with or, and what I spend the most time at is uh, investing in the relationship with people. It's super important. Today we are all numbers. Okay? We are numbers everywhere. Wherever you go, you are numbers. In the shop, uh, behind your computer, behind your, um, your, your, your phone. Uh, we are all numbers. And I think like today in the society we have, like yoga is about reconnecting people to themselves, but also about reconnecting people together, okay? Yoga means union, being together. Uh, me, what I, so my answer is not one or the other, okay? I think that uh, what is important is um, to develop a qualitative relationship with people, okay? And if these people with who you have um, good relationship based on honesty, they believe in the, in the vision, they believe in the dream. If there is something to do with those people, let's go the next step. If those people are private equity, very, very, very good. Now we are, like, I'm not, uh, like, yes, we have a project to do eight in Brussels, 20 in Belgium, 100 in Europe, okay, that's fine, okay? But I'm not going to do it at, at any price, okay? So I'm not, we, we are, we get many offer every, not every day, but we have at least, we have several ones, uh, who people who tell me, okay, Pierre, how much money you need? to make a hundred in Europe, and I'm just there, listen, you never came to yoga, you don't even know what we do, I don't know you, so what, like, how do you want we start, where do we want to start? So for me, what is the most important, and I think it's, I think it's really important, whatever we do, we do it with our member, we do it with our teacher, we do it with our staff, we do it with the potential investor, is to make sure that there is first the relationship, and that the base is there, that, okay, when we are going to say we are honest, we are, you know you're honest, you know I am honest, and we have a good ground to build something together. After that, if the investor, if we need to grow thanks to an investor, private equity, and we share the same vision of yoga, okay, fine. If it's not with him, but it's with, uh, I don't know, uh, we need to each time wait to have one studio profitable uh, to build the other one, that's, that's, that's good enough for me. So me, regarding my project, I, I think there is no, uh, I, there is not one strategy or the other. It's, I really put all my attention on the quality of the relationship. Uh, I think it's the most, it's, it is the most important for me. And I'm not going to open a studio in Paris. If on, I'm not going to open a studio in Paris for the money. I'm going to open a studio in Paris because you, the person who opened in Paris, is a person that I appreciate, I like, I'm happy to take the train to visit you. I'm, I'm happy because I know you are going to take me to a good restaurant, a good bar, <coughs> and, you know. and so that I think, for me, that's what is the most important. Based on that, at the end, money is nothing. It's just kind of energy. It comes, it disappears. Uh, 
we all get frustrated because of money, so you need to take money out of the equation. If your relationship is there, you always, I think you win, you know. It's, uh, so that's the way I, I see. After that, yeah, you want to go fast, but you make a cross on relationship, you take 100 million, you beat 100 studios, and are you happier after that? I, I have to touch a bit, you know. Does it answer the question? Well, yeah, thank you. Okay. We have time for a couple of questions, if there, there is more. How, so you, you managed to offer a great return for the my micro investing business. How did this come to, to life? Did, was it a proactive search or how did you get to this next phase of the one and a half years? Um, so me, it was it like, it, like I don't want to, do, um, I didn't want to give shares away uh, because I'm like, all my heart is on the, in this project, okay? I'm working seven days a week from seven to 10 every day. I'm doing it not because I need to, but because I love to do it. Um, and so I was not ready to dilute myself. Um, I thought, um, and the, the investor who invested, I, it's somebody that I knew a little bit, and I, 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 I offered him to invest at the first round when he when my micro invest told me, you know, no, like, no, this is never going to work. <laughs> and so when I came, and uh, so that was his first reaction. Um, and so how I came, uh, yeah, yeah, we need, I, I need somebody who could take me to the next stage. Okay, so that was one thing. There were, there were several people, so that was easy to find. We were profitable, so it was easy to have interested people in the project. Uh, then how we had to convince the crowd, um, but me, again, like, I did not really want to do a valuation, you know, what, again, it's money, it's, uh, sorry, I'm just saying, what I said is that the investor, I told him, listen, those guys, they helped me, they helped me to launch your room, you know what is it today, okay? Let's offer them times two, okay? Like the valuation anyway, it's just numbers, let's offer them times two, it's more, it's much more than what it is worth, but they deserve it. I told him, okay, you know what is the plan? He said, okay, at times two, so it means he has to pay times three almost, and because for sure they are, they are fees, everybody knows it. Um, but so, uh, and he said, yes, okay, I believe in the vision, we go, and that's how we, uh, but again, yeah, I'm sorry to say, there was no big Excel, there was no huge PPT. Uh, I went to the guy again with my heart, my eyes, I told him, you believe or you don't believe, okay, follow me, and that's, that's it. It was a 20 minute meeting at the studio number two, and he said, okay, we go, so. I think, yes, again, like, if your heart is there, if you speak with your heart, everything is possible. Like, en français, on dit, la foi, enfin, uh, si on y croit, on peut bouger des montagnes. Okay, c'est vraiment ça quoi. Si vous avez la foi, if you believe in a project, if you believe in your dream, like you don't need to be afraid of anything. Okay? If you believe in yourself, everything is possible. Okay? Everything is possible, and that's why you need to dream big. Because uh, as I usually say, is that you go big or you go home. So go big. So. Another question. So in that case, uh, I think we will. All give applause to uh, us. <laughs> so there's lots of uh, MMI uh, people, members of the team uh, in the room, so feel free to ask any questions. And um, if you are inspired, go online, uh, invest in a tracer uh, if you want to be the, the, the first to have access to uh, the next opportunities. Uh, and if you are inspired, by uh, those uh, two startups of today, feel free to go online and invest. Thanks.